Hello everyone, and welcome to Harv's World for another episode of Off the Grid. So, it's pretty early in the morning. Not too terrible, but I have been at it for a while. I always say this, but yeah. Always work to be done on the homestead. So much work to be done on the homestead. And today is no exception. Now, I'm coming back from the mailbox right now, which you probably have figured out at this point. <laughs> We've done this drive often enough. And, well, I've been doing some work on some equipment. And I've got a, a solution to a problem that um, should be interesting. I hope it works out. We're going to find out here in a little bit. Um... I have talked to Hugo and Pierre, and they have decided, well, Pierre decided, it really wasn't Hugo's decision to make other than, you know, he just wants his space back, but uh, Pierre is going to take me up on my offer, so we're going we're gonna to work out the details, but I need to get, get some trees cut out of here because I'm going to need to move my equipment up to that location. And uh, start um, start logging that out for him. Of course, he's going to help. That that goes without saying. But um, yeah, so we are going to get Pierre situated up in that area. We'll work out the financial details later. But for now, I need to get to work. So as you can see, looking out the back window, I've got a nifty new trailer. And if this trailer does what I think it's going to do for me, this will make a very sweaty and time-consuming job much quicker. So getting started today, actually, you know, one thing that I need to do really quick, because I have been remiss. Poor Raster, suffering from his owner's ignorance. <laughs> I have not given him any straw. All that straw I made the other day, and poor Raster got none of it, and he needs some bedding. So let me get that taken care of real quick here. I really need to get the animals uh, squared away today, too. At least the um, the cows could really use some uh, some attention, but... The cows need some love. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so poor Raster over here hasn't had any bedding. Probably hasn't gotten any sleep. And I brilliantly put that new trailer right where I need to go. <laughs> That's hard for you. Now, speaking of Hugo, and a here, but no, this is about Hugo, actually. Speaking of Hugo, he, um, I don't know what he's got up his sleeve, but he has asked me now for a bunch of hay bales. He wants a whole bunch of hay bales. Um, he pretty much said as many as I could bring him. Something smells like animals are on the horizon for Hugo. I don't know. Like I said, I don't... He, he's not... Uh, he's pretty tight-lipped sometimes. He doesn't uh, always speak his mind, which is fine. Just, I'm curious. But, of course, I told him, I've got all the grass in the world. <laughs> Almost literally. And I don't know if this tractor will fit through this gate. I might have to grab the the Ursus. Look out, Raster. Keep going. That good boy. That's a good boy. In fact, I missed, missed the uh, bedding area. That's better. So we'll get him some bedding. He'll be a much happier horse. 
And in fact, while I've got this straw hooked up and loaded, I might as well just run the rest of it over to the, the cattle. No sense in doing the same job twice. Speaking of grass, the cattle are just munching happily away. They look happy and healthy. They moo a lot. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, Hugo wants all the hay bales he can get his bloody little hands on. And, well, I told him I was the man for the job. So... It's going to be my first task for the day, getting Hugo some hay. That means mowing, tedding, and of course baling. You all know at this point how much I love to use the, uh, the baler. Well, you're going to be really surprised when I break it out today because well, let's just say I ordered some parts. <laughs> the last of which was this little trailer coming in here that I just picked up this morning. Now, Hugo's been doing great things for me, too, I'll tell you. So, you might have noticed, I don't have it planted or anything yet. And I really got to get on that. I'm not sure it'll get done today, though, because I've got other things that I need to do. But I did get this field cultivated, so it's ready to go. It needs some fertilizer. And God knows we need to uh, make sure to work with that herbicide this time. I've been reading up on the Farming 101. Farming for Dummies is the book that I bought. <laughs> it seems apropos or appropriate, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, yes, um, it seems like if I can spray that herbicide before my crops start to grow, I might just be able to prevent the weeds at all, so I don't have to deal with them. So we're going to give that a shot. And if that doesn't work, well, we'll just kill them off like we did the last time, although I hate to, hate to, uh, do the same job twice, especially as expensive as fertilizer can be, but we do what we got to do. And what we got to do right now is mow. Mow like the wind. You know what would be really nice is if this, uh, if this mower If the, uh, the tether would hook right back to the mower, but that doesn't work because the mower's output is directly to the rear. But yeah, look at all this out here. I have done a whole bunch of... Um, what's the best way to phrase this? <laughs> Stump grinding. Oh my god, I was grinding stumps for hours, and I've got, I'm going to end up having more to do. Because in order to move my equipment over to help out Pierre, I need to get the last of these trees out. That needs to get done sooner rather than later. We'll see how it sorts itself out, but... I'd like to get that done pretty quick here. So yeah, I don't think Hugo is going to have any shortage of hay bales when this is done. But it is going to take some time, so I think now might just be a perfect time to go into a little bit of time lapse. Talk to you in a minute.
done. As done as it's going to get anyway. The tedding is done. The windrowing is done because of this beautiful New Holland windrower tedder. <laughs> and I just had to get the Ursus out to play for a while. That was going to be important. Because the Ursus is... It's, it's like the... I don't know, how do I put this? The Ursus is the... Kind of the heart and soul of the homestead. The Ursus is responsible for building the homestead. It is... What made all of this possible to begin with. If it wasn't for the Ursus, none of this would have happened. None of it whatsoever. And unfortunately, because the jobs have gotten bigger, more challenging, the Ursus has sometimes had to take a back seat. In fact, I usually use the Ursus to run bales, but because of this new setup I've got, going on. I'm afraid it's just not going to quite handle it. And not that it can't run the baler, because it can definitely run the baler. But more so because I think when this bale trailer starts getting full, it's going to start taxing the pulling power of the Aresis. We're going to find out for sure today. See if this new setup even works. See if my plan comes together. Because we all know how much I love it when a plan comes together. So let's see what happens. Well, the baler still works like it's supposed to. That's always a bonus. <laughs> Oh, of course, when I was working on it, I was testing it out, making sure that I wasn't breaking anything. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can... <laughs> it just is launching the heck out of those bales. I'll try to get one lined up really well so you can see. Wow. No, yeah, I'll try to get one lined up so that it doesn't pick up any grass whatsoever. Or any hay whatsoever. Here, when I make the turn, we'll be able to see this much, much better. Look at that thing launch those. That is impressive. <laughs> that is outstanding. No more hand loading bales. That was worth it. Just for that little fact alone. Of course, I can't drive. I'm. I'm this is what I always do. Oh, we lost one. No, we can't have that. I don't want to have to come back out here picking up. Maybe as you turn the corner, if it launches, it's just not targeted right. That would be... That would be my guess. There. Yeah, whenever I get a new toy... <laughs> I can't drive with the crap because I'm trying to see what my new toy is doing. Let's see if we can see this from back here. Wow, that's um 
some interesting bail flight pattern there. <laughs> Yeah, we're not making any bales because I'm not picking up any grass oh, or any hay. Wow. Now I'm kind of curious to see how, how much of this it will actually hold. It looks like it's going to hold a heck of a lot. Look at that. I mean, that's just amazing. Oh, Hugo's going to get what he asked for. Lots and lots of hay bales. Look at that. That's awesome. In Harv's traditional cliche, too cool for school. <laughs> Absolutely. As always, I'll have to come back through here and do some cleanup. And that goes without saying. Man, that's going to hold a lot. Yeah, see, and this is why I was afraid the Ursus just might not be able to handle this job because, well, that trailer's going to get heavy. Dry grass or not, hay bales are still bloody heavy. Yeah, see, it's down here on the turns. I think the trailer turns and the baler just can't quite get it in there. I'm not sure what's going on with the levitating bale up there. It's stuck in mid-flight. No, it really is stuck in mid-flight. <laughs> oh, there it looks like it finally fell. Maybe. going to finish collecting these bales. Well, we lost another one. I think the launcher just is getting a little aggressive sometimes. Hey, that's okay. One bale every now and then, I don't mind. It's picking up 40 or 50 or 60 or 100 that uh, yeah, it just becomes a little taxing. But it's all part of working on the farm, on the homestead still. This is going to make life much, much easier. So I'm going to keep collecting bales, and I will talk to you in just a little bit. Well, I'd call that a pretty darn full bale wagon. I don't know how many are in there, but it's full enough now that when the when the bale <laughs> when the bale launcher tries to toss them in, they're just flying right off over the top. So I will need to run that down to uh, to Hugo at some point. But 
but not not just now. I've got too much work on my own to get done. He didn't say it was an emergency exactly or anything, so... Now I'm bouncing bales all over the place. Good God, Harv. Still, that is going to make life much, much easier. Imagine how easy it'll be to take a load of bales down to the, the farm market now. Don't even tell me you roll up. Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> I was sure that was going to roll right off the back. Okay, in fact, I think what I'm going to do is probably just drop the bale trailer right over here. I'll hook up to it with the pickup and run that down to Hugo at some point in the not too distant future, probably by the end of the day. Not before you and I part company, I think, but it's all right. Now the question I have is, planting or tree harvesting? I think the answer is planting. Why, you might ask? Well, because my field will just be sitting there doing nothing while I harvest trees, or I can get it planted so it's growing while I harvest trees. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer at this point, don't you think? I think so. And in fact, let's see if we can't get the Ursus working a little bit more today. And I'm pretty sure the Ursus will handle this little task with no problem. The Ursus knows a little something about some fertilizer spreading. And we should have plenty of fertilizer to get that job done. So, remember our little tiny fertilizer spreader that we started out with? Not anymore. But you know, call me crazy. No, you can't really. I, I pretty much am certifiably insane. If a judge ever got a hold of me, I'd probably be locked up for forever. But those small tools, everything that we kind of started out with, even though they're they're not good for the operation as it's as it's grown, I'll always think back on them fondly. I'm not like a person, obviously, but, <laughs> but you know, it's I don't know. Getting started, learning the ropes, getting it all sorted, and how well it all worked out. And those little tools did it for us. I mean, look at this. Look what, what has built up over time here. That's a beautiful, beautiful place. I couldn't be happier with it. I've even made, you know, you go into a place where you pretty much do everything on your own, but then you still end up making friends. Good close friends. And I said that early on. You know, I didn't come up here to avoid cis people or... I didn't hate society or none of that goofy crap that people get in their heads. No, it was just I wanted to prove myself to myself. That's all it is. All it has ever been. And learning to drive a tractor so that I'm lined up properly and not squirreling all over the place. <laughs> Why? Because, well, after all this time, I still have issues driving the tractor. 
at least keeping it on a decent path. Look at look at this. All over the place. I'm gonna have to go over stuff a second time. That little edge over there is actually kind of weird. It's almost like it doesn't want fertilizer. I'm gonna have to go check that out. There we go. Actually, to be perfectly honest, as weird as this probably sounds, switching between a little tractor like this and a much bigger tractor like the International makes such a big difference. Well, I just missed it. Okay, anyway, like I was saying, the steering is very different, so... When you get into a small tractor, it gets, or feels like it's very squirrely. At least that's how it feels to me. Okay, I'm just going to leave the Ursus right here. Cedar. Oats. There. No question for planting oats today. Yes, it's oats. I swear to God, when this grows, if it looks like wheat, I might just strangle someone. <laughs> Another good reason to be off the grid. There's nobody around to strangle. Oh. Well, this will make Raster very happy. Very happy indeed. And I'm going to end up with more straw. Hopefully Hugo needs more straw because um, I've got plenty. I've got tons and tons of straw. There will be no straw shortage whatsoever. Which, just saying that makes me feel even worse about leaving poor Raster out in the lurch with not enough straw. With no straw. But, no sense crying over spilt milk. It'll be nice to get the rest of these trees out of here because, frankly, this end of this field, I got it a little tight with the trees, as you can see, because I'm having to run into those trees to get any work done on this end of the field. I'll have to remember that as I create my other fields. Don't get too close to the trees, although I've said it twice during field creation now and, and didn't heed my own advice. I will. I will. So, the seeding is done. I've got a lovely oat field planted here. And now, well, we're going to see about some herbicide. I'm going to see if I can pre-treat this field and keep those weeds from coming in. Ought to work. Should work, right? I'm 
pre-treating as much of the dirt off to the side of the field <laughs> as I am the field. Good God. Not on game today. It's all right. This is a new tool. I'm not quite used to uh, completely how it operates yet. What its width is, that kind of thing. We'll get it sorted. We always do. I'm still off the mark a little bit over there, it looks like, but we'll touch that up. And I'll be on the mark now, that's for sure. works a lot better if you stay in the tractor. Just a little safety tip for you. <laughs> I'm still not nailing it quite right. You know, this thing is not the prettiest uh, piece of equipment I've ever owned. Not by a long shot, but it does do a very good job. Got to get the width down. <laughs> Got to learn to pay attention to where I'm driving. I'm, yeah, look at that jagged. Now it's not just trying to see what the equipment's doing. It's actually just trying to line it up, but I'm not looking forward enough paying attention to where I'm going as opposed to what the equipment's doing. I know I've got some touching up to do back there. That's okay. That's okay. It's all part of the learning process. You know, if you think about it, really think about it, we haven't been up on the homestead for that long. It hasn't been that long. I'd say it's been about a year, year and a half. I don't know. I've lost track of time. But, you know, look at all that's been accomplished in that short amount of time. And I'm still, still in the learning process. Always something new to learn like the fact that I've got these big arms out behind me and they don't turn around through fences. That's something to learn. You know what's truly remarkable, however, is that the service side has been manufactured so I can spray it directly on my grass and it won't kill it. That's pretty pretty spectacular. That's some chemical engineering magic right there. All right, let's see what we missed. Well, this end isn't too bad. I'm starting to get the hang of it. Of course, I was over applying probably way more than I needed to, but that's okay. So we'll knock out right through here. Like so. And one last little strip down here. Like so. And that, my friends, is one fully planted field of oats. Now all I have to do is sit back and wait for harvest. Whenever that may be. That's one of the things that I like about this job. If I do things in the right order, I can relax a little bit. Move on to other, other things.
like learning to back up better. Hey, that was pretty good. That wasn't bad at all. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Now, I want to get to cutting, cutting the rest of that forest out. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt like I should get these bales over to Hugo. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to run those over to him and uh, find out what's going on. Well, I didn't actually make it to the sawmill. I'm down here at uh, Hugo's Buildings. And he even helped me unload these bales, which was pretty nice of him, and paid me a little something for him too. Almost 3000 for that load. And said, keep bringing them because he will take all he can get his hands on. And yeah, as you can see, time has kind of flown. We got talking. You know how that goes. We got to talking and got a call, actually, from, uh, from Charlie. And she let us know that Chuck is doing much better. Now, he did end up having a surgery. Um, that, that's been a while. But he's finally getting up and around again. Looks like he's, uh, he's doing well. Not strong enough to try to come back up here and, and live on his own or anything. But um, he is out of the hospital. She's taken him to her place. And between her and her parents... Chuck's daughter and uh, her husband they are trying to get him squared away taking care of him so that was really good news good to know that Chuck is on the mend she did say that he might have to have a couple more treatments she didn't say exactly what and you know when it comes to medical stuff you just don't go prying about people's affairs but yeah she uh she said he's doing very well. And talking to Hugo, you know, he's excited about the prospect of Chuck doing better. You know, this guy's been friends for ages, worked together for ages. And also, Hugo decided to uh, open up a little bit about what his plans are, at least partly. So, he's been in contact with a few ranchers, apparently. And apparently, he wants to kind of go into what I would call an animal wholesaling type situation. That's why he wants all the straw and hay. He said, even if I could bring him grass, that would be great. So, I will be hauling bales over to Hugo from time to time. Now, what he's doing is buying young animals and uh, feeding them up, fattening them up, getting them ready for market not market um to move on to other ranchers especially milk cattle he's really focused on milk cattle but he's also going to be um you know working with pretty much any animal you can get get in on you know he said if i ever needed more chickens if i wanted to well have another uh, horse or sheep if I wanted sheep or pigs or anything like that well he said he would be happy to hook me up so yeah we kind of came to an arrangement I'm gonna bring him as you know all the bales I can get my hands on which means I need to go bail up the rest of that hay but that's gonna be for some other time because I need to get some trees cut but I think cutting trees is gonna wait now because well we talked for far too long and it's getting far too late in the day to get started on that. So I think that's going to do it for this episode of Off the Grid. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. I really appreciate you coming along for the ride. 
And until next time, take care.